Okay, so what I've done here is I have a uh, chair. Notice I also have a JPEG here, wood grain. I found this on the internet. It's actually really pretty big, um, a pretty big texture. It's 1,500 pixels, which is probably a little bit um, more pixels than you really need, but that's okay. Um, it would slow down a game. Generally, in a game, you have, uh, if I remember correctly, it's about 500 pixels or so is a is a typical texture for, you know, a moderate sized object like a chair or a box or something like that. But so that's the wood grain that we're going to use for this, and then I have a chair. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, I made this chair last period, okay? You can see it even has little butt indentations, okay? So this chair is going to be a little bit more comfortable, maybe, than some of yours. But you'll also notice that using the, um, the subsurface modifier, what I've done here is that I have, um, uh, whoops, edit mode. I have made some edges so that the legs are round, but you can see I, I used uh, creases here to kind of create a little bit of a, of a better chair. We're going to see how this works. Um, this is a little bit more of an, an experiment for me. So in order to, um, in order to start with your, um, your UV mapping, what you need to do is you need to first have a material, and then you have a texture. And then what you can do, and this is the, the best way to do this in, in my mind, or at least as I've done this, and you're going to, again, have to excuse me if I fumble through this a tiny bit. What we need to do is we need to add ourselves um, another uh, or, or an image. So right now I've got a texture here, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go to an image or a movie. And um, yes, if you, if you listen to that correctly, you can actually project movies on the objects, by the way. That's pretty cool if you ask me. Um, it's called rotoscoping is another word for it. When I do that and I choose image or movie, you'll see right down here, all of a sudden you get uh, um, a, uh, an options here to choose. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And uh, there's my woodgrain.jpg and open that. And you can see the wood grain is now on the object. And if I were to uh, go to this here, you can see how it's kind of, see how it looks very stretched? Okay, on, this, on the side there, I know it's a little hard for you to see. Um, but, you know, that's why we have to do UV mapping is because stuff like this doesn't always project well onto an image. Um, you can change the way it's, it's uh, projected on there as well. But what we're actually going to do is, like I said, a UV mapping. So now the easiest thing for me to do is to go here and I'm going to choose screen layout and I'm going to go to UV editing. And what I need to do is right down here, I'm going to hit a new, um, and I'm going to choose my wood grain texture. And the big thing that I have to do here now, in this window, is I need to set my seams. Because right now, even though I've chosen an image, it's still getting stretched and wrapped around the object in the same way that it used to. So what I'm going to try and do is imagine taking the box like I just did there in front of you where I took that box and I flattened it. Now imagine cutting it apart into its separate sides. That's really what we need to do here is we need to cut this apart and mark seams. And seams are going to be edges, okay, where the projection is going to change. So what will happen is it will project it flat against the back, and then it will also project it flat down on the bottom of the seat, instead of one of those being stretched because it's trying to wrap it around. It's really powerful and very cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode, and um, you can see my, my creases, but I'm going to go to edge, I'm going to grab my edges, and then what I'm going to try and do here is I'm actually going to try and, and set up seams. So uh, I'm going to right click here on this, right click, ah. and it gets a little complicated sometimes because you can click on um, pieces that are, uh, you know, somewhere else. And uh, in other words, um, like behind the object. And actually, I might not want to just make this a seam. I'm going to right click there, there, 
there, and there. Now see how I've basically selected this entire side here? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mesh, mesh me menu. Where? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Yes, I did miss that. Thank you. So now I've basically got an entire section set up. Thank you for that because it's very important. Um, now I've got that set up, and I'm going to go to Edges, and I'm going to mark the seam. And uh, you'll see that it changes color if I deselect. Now it doesn't change color too much, and the reason being because I have these creases set up. So that can be a little confusing if you've got creases set up. I can't forget the other side. I don't want to neglect that. Sometimes you need to just zoom in here. There we go. So now I have that one. Mesh, edges, mark, seam. Okay. Now I'm going to mark a seam along the top. Mesh, edge, mark, seam. Now I need to mark the front here, so there, 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 okay, so you see how that one's selected, mesh, edge, mark, seam. <clears throat> Let's do the back here, and I'll probably decide to go all the way across there. Okay, and mark the seam there. And then I should probably mark the seams for the top, although they should already be done because I marked all three other sides for it. It's a good idea just to do it, just in case. Okay. And now, so basically I've got the sides done, I've got the top done, the seat and the back. I should mark the seam for the front here. And based on the way that I designed my chair, Okay, I want this to be separate from the legs. So, did I miss one? Oh, yes, I did. Thank you. There we go. Now we've got the whole loop there. And uh, mesh, edges, mark seam. Now, here comes the, the other key part. <clears throat> I do need to mark seams for the bottom of the feet. Um, even though you might not think that that would be necessary, you do have to do it. And beyond that, you also need to mark a seam for the, for the legs somewhere because what's happening is it's getting wrapped because that is a round part of the object. Um, so we actually have to mark a seam there. So I, I did those, edge, mark seam, okay? And then what I'll do is on the legs, I'm going to mark one seam on the inside of each leg, which is where it's going to be the least visible okay as an edge and you can see how the uh, the seams are kinda orangish when you don't have a crease on them so you see how that's orangish there that's how you can tell edges mark seam and then boom mesh edges mark seam so now at this point in time what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save as here, not save, but save as, and I'm just going to call this chair demo, and I'm going to call this uh, seamed. Did I spell seamed right? Yeah. <laughs> just making sure it didn't look right for some reason. All right, there. So now I've got a new file. So now what we're going to do is we can select all, and we need to unwrap. And by unwrapping, notice all of a sudden, look at this. This is what's really cool. Each one of the pieces for the chair is now projected onto our wood grain texture. See that? And so we can see how each piece, and you can grab them. Whoops. No. <laughs> you can grab things and you can adjust the way you want the texture to look. 
So what I should be able to do here is select, let's see here, select linked border select. I should be able to, all right, just hold the shift key down, select everything. So now I can select something and I can move it so that I can get to a better texture. So uh, there we go, and uh, I unselected it. Keep doing that. Why isn't it working for me? All right, this is where I forget how to do this part. I can probably translate it this way. So I could move it up with the translate key. Oops, no, for some reason that's only working on the left. So I have to do it with here. Anyway. I'll figure that out and then I'll show you again, sorry. Um, but the other thing that you can do is you can be very specific about what pieces match up. So if I go over here to my edit mode and I go to textured instead, you can start to see how the wood grain is going to be uh, placed on the object. And so one of the things that I don't, you know, I want to make sure is how certain things go in certain directions. Okay, so here I'm not a huge fan, I'm not sure what's going on there, I'm not a huge fan of some of these wood grains going this way, right? So what could I do? I could probably go back, I could, re, I could rewrap it, I go back and instead of having the chair be one piece here like this, I could make this section be one piece and then that way I could have the grains going lengthwise. So you can rotate individual pieces of your textures, oh, I keep using the wrong keys here, okay, to make it look better. So right now here, this chair here, th this other side, if I look at it here, you can see how it's on a diagonal. Well, I, d I don't really like that. I don't like that at all. So what I should be able to do is w by shift clicking on all the points here, um, I should be able to then choose the object and I should be able to rotate it. And I don't know why it's not working. I'm messing something up here. Give me a second. Vertex selection, edge selection mode, fate. Yeah, that's normal. Maybe I need to be rotate. No, see that only works for that window. That's what I thought. <coughs> All right. Well, let's just say this. I don't want to waste too much time. So what we'll do is this. You've got the basics. You understand how to start creating crease or edges or um, seams so that you can start to say, I want this projected here and so on and so forth. Then what I'll do is I'm going to see what I'm doing wrong. I'll figure that out tonight or this afternoon. And then tomorrow I'll do a real quick demo starting right where we are here and show you how you can start rotating <clears throat> the shapes so that you can put the projections basically on uh, the side of the object. Here's what's really cool. Once you figure this out with Blender, or once I figure this out with Blender, once you get this done, when you export the object, the mapping and where the position are, the textures, goes with the object. So that when you throw the object back into Unity, the texture actually doesn't come with it, as I understand. Okay? The texture has to then be loaded in a second time separately because Unity wraps the textures around the objects on its own so that it can adaptively render the objects on the fly, which is what you need for a game. But what's cool is the settings that you set here for the UV mapping come with the object. So when you add the texture back into Unity, all your settings for where the object is and what pieces go where 
they all come right in. So one of the things that I was noticing in Unity, I was playing around in it today, they have a little soldier guy in the, in the, um, in the example game that they have, and if you find him in the list, you can see this exact thing. In fact, let me, uh, let me show you. You can see exactly how this works. Let me make sure it's not open on my, um, my other computer here. It's not. So look, look here. So this is, I'm going to close, I'm going to close Blender here. So save real quick, quit. So if I open up Unity, it has this, um, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I already did this. All right, so now that once Unity opens here, if it ever does, it's going, it's going. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. There we go. Wait, almost there. Okay. So take a look. If I hit the game button here, you can see this soldier guy, okay? And uh, let me just hit the play button. Let's see how fast this moves. Um, thinking it's thinking hopefully it won't crash there we go okay so this is pretty cool I mean this is this is the demo that they have here look I mean okay but what I want you to see is if we if I move around him you can see his face and everything like that I mean I can shoot nah it is really cool but if I, you know, you can see all the textures and stuff. If I, um, if I get out of the game here and I go back to my scene and I go down and I find him, um, there's my soldier, um, and I go over here and you see the, um, you see these textures, okay? Take a look at his face and just double click. Oh, it doesn't open up very well. I want to see it. Oh, here. If I click on it here, I think, yeah, it goes really big. Okay? But and it looks really silly, guys. It looks really funny because, again, it's got to be wrapped around his face. But you can see how the person that set up this texture has cut out certain pieces and added seams. So you've got these seams along the top of the helmet. You've got, look at the eyeballs are right there, the eyes. Okay? And then you've got the face without the eyes. And you've got the goggles here, and you've got the helmet, and you've got the, you know, so you have all of these pieces that are here that they've cut out. And they had to set that all up in the 3D animation program and do this mapping. And then what happens is when you bring the, the guy's body into Unity, it remembers where all those pieces were set up, and it goes to your texture, and, and there you go. And that's how, and then how, how, that's how it starts to wrap it around. It's really cool. You could. Yeah, you can do anything. So, you, you know, you can use photographs. You know, I'm sure that they, what they did is they did a blend of both here where they did a lot of photography, but obviously the guy's face is, like, opened. So what they have to do is it's like, it's like, um, it's like cutting open an, an orange, taking the skin off of it in one piece, and then trying to flatten it out, okay? It's obviously not going to look like an orange anymore. It's going to be very distorted. So they probably took photographs, and then with a lot of Photoshop work, okay, they took side views and front views, and they blend those together so that it wraps around his head in the right manner. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's, I mean, so we're going to get into some heavy Photoshop work to start doing stuff like this where you're taking textures and wrapping it around. So those of you guys who've had media arts or some of the other classes will be at a great advantage over some of the people who haven't here with the Photoshop, but that's that's a big part of putting textures on objects in Unity. You got to know Photoshop. So, any other questions? Because that was a very good question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not until I see smoke coming from your ears. I see it. Anybody else? It's all done. All right. You see the smoke? All right. I see this. I see the smoke.